Today, we've got some interesting parts to make. Well, sort of. Actually, the parts are super boring, and they might literally be the simplest parts that I've ever had to machine. But the material that we're gonna be making them out of is interesting. This is called Makor. It is a ceramic. To my understanding, it is borosilicate glass, which is like the glass in your phone screen, combined with mica, which is a kind of flaky rock. I literally only took this job because I wanted an excuse to try machining this stuff. This, this Makor is so different from anything else that I have ever machined before. And with that, there's kind of a lot of like uncertainty and there's just a lot of things I don't know. I do not know how this material behaves. It's a ceramic, so it should be hard, but also I've heard it's rather crumbly and it is labeled as machinable, which implies that it's not as hard as something like zirconium or whatever the cool machinists are machining. Now I can't show you the actual parts that I'm making out of these, the customer parts, because I'm NDA'd, but they're super simple. It's literally just a cylinder. But really the part that I'm making is irrelevant. This project is about figuring out how to machine this stuff and kind of understanding its physical properties so that I can do it better if I ever encounter a more difficult project with it in the future. So the first question of the day, how do we cut this? Traditionally for metals, I use this bandsaw. And for plastics, I use my table saw. I hopped on Discord and I asked Adam the machinist what he would do, and he said to use a tile saw. I, of course, do not have a tile saw, but I have a Dremel and I have one of these guys, a cutoff disc thingy. I'm calling this thing plan A, and if this doesn't work, I'm gonna go buy a diamond wheel for my Dremel. All right, I'm gonna be wearing a mask whenever I'm cutting this stuff, because ceramic and safety glasses, obviously. I should plug in the tool. Well, that was easy. All right, we're already learning some things about our material properties here. So this did not really seem to cut. It was glowing bright red where the cutoff disc was hitting it. And it did remove a little bit of material, but I think really what happened is I gave it a weak point and I subjected it to vibration and it just snapped off. So it didn't actually cut it snapped, which I think that definitely shows that this is crumbly and that is something we're gonna be fighting. If we go to the microscope here, you can see this area looks rough. This kind of looks like snow. And then you can see just right here, it's a little bit shinier and you can see some marks from the, the grinding wheel. This right here is all we cut and then this here sheared off. My original plan was to tab this stuff off with a slitting saw like I normally do. And I don't know if that's gonna work so well. But that brings up another good question. A lot of the times when I'm tabbing things off, I use a sandpaper to finish the backside just to, to knock off that tab. How does this stuff sand? So we'll take this rough edge here. This is 600 grit. I suppose I should have been wearing a mask for that too. I didn't think about that. But that sanded super well. It was almost like writing with sidewalk chalk on the sidewalk. So we might actually be able to finish the backside and remove a fair amount of material with sandpaper and maybe some sort of jig to make sure that we're square. That'll mean that we don't have to do an op two in a vise. And I really don't want to put this stuff in a vise because it may crush the part if I'm not careful. Speaking of work holding, nothing fancy on this one. We'll be using my ER40 call it fixture. Normally I would use my torque wrench with this uh, torque wrench adapter from Martin Precision Tools to tighten this down but I wanna be really careful not to crush this material and I'm not worried about our work holding. So I'm just gonna kinda of use this wrench adapter as a, well, wrench and tighten it until it is just snug. I don't wanna go gorilla mode on this and crush my material. That might be just a tad more stick out than I need. With cutting the bar in half, this is where it ended up. It's bottoming out on the fixture. Since I can't show you the actual part, I'm gonna go design a YouTube safe version of it and we'll make that as our test piece. So to quickly go over our part and cam here, we're gonna start with a 3D adaptive just to remove the bulk of the material. Come in, finish the top with a flat, 
do a contour around the outside with tool compensation on so I can dial in the diameter of that tool. Do a bore, uh, do this fillet here, do a chamfer. Again, we're surfacing that chamfer with a ball mill. And then coming in with my cutoff tool and leaving a big honk and tab here, it'll be about that size. For the most part, my feeds and speeds are kind of similar to titanium. I'm just guessing on speeds and feeds here. When I called Harvey, they said 600 SFM. When I was Googling around, I found people recommending 25 SFM. Yes, 25. So I kind of split the difference and went for like 100, 200. I don't think going too slow will ever hurt. So we shall find out. Okay, thanks to this thing being white, I'm not sure if you guys are ever gonna be able to see any details on here, but it looks fantastic. It looks phenomenal. I'm very happy with how this turned out. Can we get a little bit of the details? You can see the hole there. I haven't measured it yet, um, but overall, I'm very happy with how this stuff machined. And I think I'm ready to go make my actual parts now. Hey everybody, it's the next day now. Yesterday, I went into kind of production mode after that last clip and I knocked out all of my customer part because, you know, I have to actually make money. For the most part, they went smoothly. The lessons I learned on that test part were instructive and I didn't really have too many problems. There was just a one little snag that I kept running into. This is a chunk of the stock that was right below the last piece. Remember, I, I was tabbing these parts off. And you can see just barely here, this little, like there's, it's kind of a high spot there and an indent there. That was left because I was like breaking the piece that I tabbed off, off. I was breaking that tab. And depending on how you pulled it, it would leave some material behind and also take a chunk of material with it. If it was leaving extra material there on that top face, it wasn't a big deal because that would just be machined off when I run the next part out of the top of that stock. But, if it left a crater, either on the part that I was removing or the existing stock, that could leave a noticeable indent on either the part that I just made or the part that I was about to make, just depending on how it ended up breaking off. So what I ended up doing is I left like 10 thou extra and I ended up using a sanding jig to remove that 10 thou. And sometimes that 10 thou wasn't enough and I still scrapped part. So if I had to redo it, I think I wouldn't do the sanding method to get rid of that tab. I would just leave like 50 thou extra material and then machine it off in a second op. That being said, when there wasn't a little crater, removing the tab via sandpaper worked super, super well. So I made this little 3D printed jig. It's just a circle with a uh, different circle through it that fits the part. And this helps me keep things square when I faced them off on the sandpaper. This actually worked really well. My flip, my parallelism on these parts was within a couple tenths on, on all of them without much effort. So this worked super well. Uh, for sandpaper, I used 600 grit, which honestly was a little bit too aggressive. This removed material kind of fast and I could easily be not paying attention and remove like 2000 material um, in a, a pretty short period of time. So I think I would probably go to a thousand grit if I was doing that again, just so that you can kind of fine tune the material that you're removing uh, more easily. Cause just a couple strokes would be like five tenths. I did eventually start doing this wet. I think when I showed it before I was doing it dry, 
but a little bit of Windex on here. Uh, I think most importantly kept the dust down, but also it kind of helps clear the the gunk out of the way. It gets it, it cleans the abrasive so that it cuts faster. So just Windex on here did did really well. So the parts are made, but I want to do some experiments with this material just to get an idea of its mechanical properties in case I have to use it again in the future. Again, I took this job solely because I wanted to experiment with this material. How well does it handle like impact? That is better than I thought it would be. Oh, yep, there you go. That wasn't even that hard. Okay, how does it handle sharp things? It's definitely not butter. I know there's no way you can see that, but I'm actually removing material with just this. So again, in terms of hardness, this stuff is not hard. What does it do on a scotch bright wheel? The scotch bright wheel gets rid of it pretty quick. Can we polish it? Again, I don't think you're gonna be able to see anything, but it definitely polished. How does it handle the ultrasonic cleaner? This shouldn't really be an issue, but I am curious. Okay, and... Yeah, it's absolutely fine as you would imagine. And then one last test. This stuff is supposed to be like a super, super, super good insulator and good for high heat. But what happens when we quench it in water? It did not shatter. There is nothing different about the piece. That did not phase it at all. I've heard you can notch this stuff with a file. That's a terrible sound. And then break it off. And can we break it at that notch? We didn't get a chance, I squeezed too hard with the pliers.